centuries, mankind has been fascinated with realms outside of our conscious awareness. Through a series of interviews with practitioners, guest speakers, and experts, Liberate the podcast covers all that and more, from health and holistic healing to the supernatural. We aim to educate, motivate, inspire, and liberate your consciousness. and welcome to another episode of Liberate the Podcast. Today we have a special guest, Mumtaj, with us, and she's going to really talk about, you know, how to div- how to align with the divine. And Mumtaj has been a part of Liberate Emporium since its conception. She's also an amazing creative writer. She's just this being of love. And if there's anybody that is aligned with the divine, it's definitely her. So we're going to take a uh, you know, little bit of time today to you know, first kind of understand what does that mean and how do you do it? So Mumtaj, if you want to kind of introduce uh, a little bit about what is aligning with the divine. Yeah, cool. Um, so aligning with the divine means to kind of be open um, to wherever you may be like at the moment and to kind of understand the universal signs that may come at you, you know, because most of us, we are open, but then are we really open if we do see signs like, for example, um, sweet synchronicities that come in on a daily basis, but we don't know because we're so closed off, you know, like, Let's say, for example, you will see a hummingbird just come and fly and it's right in front of you and it just hovers there right in front of you and you know it's meant for you. How, what, what is that a symbol of? Well, it's a symbol of kind of being free spirited and to kind of release and just kind of go with the flow and be, just be free, just like a hummingbird and just kind of don't ponder on your worries too much don't ponder on your fears too much just release go with the flow and be you know another sweet synchronicity would be a ladybug you know if it just happily lands on you don't just flick it off like most people do because it's an insect it's a beauty it's it's a wonderful thing if you have um, a ladybug land on you because it's a sign of luck Okay, yeah. so you're saying a couple things that let's let's backtrack a little bit because you know some of the audience that might be listening they they understand you know some of these words and terminology mm. um, and Mumtaj is you're doing a great job of letting us know like some examples of these sweet synchronicities as you call it and some hidden meaning behind it but let's take a, a couple steps back and you know, what does being open really mean to you? Mm. And, you know, what is that that concept? You know, if, if we were explaining to somebody that maybe doesn't have much of, uh, uh, you know, maybe they're newer on the path, maybe right. they just don't have this terminology within their vocabulary, mm. what is being open? Well, for most people, being open can be hard, you know, but it's all about first recognizing the self. You know, um, how are you feeling at the moment? Um, are you kind of, um, are you anxious? Do you have worry around the heart? Do you have a worry around the mind? Do you have worry around the soul? You know, so the first thing is just kind of release all of that. And most importantly, to release the ego. Because most of the time we walk with ego. And sometimes it's good and sometimes it's bad, but just don't let the ego take control. You know, but when we acknowledge the self, along with acknowledging the ego and to kind of have um, those two conversations and then we uh, say to the ego, hello ego, um, I want you to not take over most of my day. I want to be open. I want to just let go of what no, of what no longer serves me energetically, maybe physically, mentally, and just go about my life. You know, because sometimes we just drag all of these unnecessary energies with us throughout our life, which can definitely bring us down. Okay. You know. So it, so I'm hearing that being open is a sense of lightness, freedom. Very much so. You know, so if somebody is open, they're what I'm hearing is that they're they're not taking a lot of the baggage and energies yes. from their past, 
And I think you're alluding to it, but I haven't said it directly, but expectations. Yes. You know, so... To so, not judge the self, especially. The, That's the biggest thing is we like to be hard on ourselves. Yeah. And judging ourselves ends up being judging others. In, uh-huh. In environments. And that's when the ego comes in, too. So that's why. So it's, it's really getting to this space of acceptance and being... Mm. Um, if I may, being present. Most definitely. In, in one's life. And yes. so when, when people are at a state of being present, I think that that's the state of which, uh, you know, we were talking a little bit before that you were wanting to share about how being present is allowing magic in one's mm-hmm. life, right? Most definitely. So, um, so let's say that somebody is starting to clear away some of this, you know, unnecessary uh, energies, baggage, emotions, you know, um, how might somebody do that? You know, what are some steps that you found might work, work for you, right. um, customers in the store, people mm-hmm. in your life? Um, you said one about, you know, talking to that ego and saying, right. you know, like and shedding that, but is there other things that you found that can be very effective of, kind of releasing and finding that open space right well since I'm a writer um every now and again I would just write everything down that's a form of release to me is just write everything down you know in the morning or just when I'm feeling heavy I'll just write it all down if I don't have time to write um I so literally getting it out yes so so some people that might be writing it down Mm -hmm. some people that might be you know, speaking. going going and speaking, maybe yes. getting a, a healing, mm-hmm. a therapy session, mm-hmm. conversation with a good friend. Right. Okay. Or, you know, you can even just talk out loud. Okay. You know, like, hey, I'm having difficulties. What's going on with me? Like, you can just verbalize that out loud if you don't want to write it down. Okay. You know, because then you'll, like, slowly feel all of, like, this unnecessary energy just climb up from, like the bottom of your feet and just slowly crawl out and then you'll just feel everything lump up from your throat and just come out and then after having that conversation with the self it will just all come out okay. you know um so any, any other tricks or techniques that you find you know because what if what about if somebody you know is having a really hard time with something in their life or maybe they don't even know that there is an issue you know how right. some, some people are uh, so in their that negative space that they're not even aware of how negative they're being or pessimistic they're being mm. and how attached they are to X, Y, or Z. Right. So how does that person start to climb out of that hole? Well, um, if you're in, in that space... Um, or if you're trying to talk to a friend and you know no other factors can help, I would just say be by yourself, but then when you're by yourself, you have to engulf yourself in just a space of clear white light. That's as easy as it gets. Because okay. when they're in that space, they can be stubborn and they do not want to interact with anyone or, any- or anything. That's the most simplest thing. Okay, so a little visualization yes. power that's almost like, you know, mm-hmm. meditation in a way. But, as simple as that. But seeing that white divine light. Yeah. Okay, so now let's, okay, so let's take a few steps forward. Like somebody's, you know, starting to be in a more open space. You know, what are some of the, the dynamics of kind of creating that magic? And what is that magic and stuff, you know, that you were kind of talking about a little earlier? Right. Well, what is that magic is um, you see everything in in a new spectacle, new perspective. You meet all these people that you know, for example, you can never meet because you were either close-minded or close-hearted. You know, and you're like, wow, and all these people are guiding you to your goals, to your higher, higher purpose. And you have all these situations happen all in divine timing. Everything happens in divine timing when you are are in this open heart space. Okay. You know, which is quite magical. Okay, so you're in this open heart space and that, you know, it sounds like without the attachment, without the ego, you can just be present. Yes. Maybe you can have and see people in a different light than mm-hmm. you would have normally seen And you them. especially see yourself in a different light. Which is a really important. It's, it's very big. And most of us, when we're in that space, it, it can be new and sometimes we don't know how to react to that. Okay. 
you know, because it's like a new dimension. It's a new dimension. We sometimes we can even be scared. Like, first of all, I've never experienced this. How does one go about experiences experiencing this? Um, we just go with the flow of life. Go where the universe takes us. Just just go. Don't stop. If you're stop or if you're stopping, it's because of fear. It's okay to be in that fear for a brief moment and then allow yourself to question like, why am I feeling like this? It's okay, let's move on. You know, mm. let's pack this fear away. But I will I know fear will come every now and and again, but it's okay because I'm seeing fear in this new light. It's okay. Mm. And then we just allow ourselves to go. And allow ourselves to go. Yeah. And kind of face that fear and, and plow forward. Because, I mean, in, in your experience, um, would you say that most most fear is just self-made up anyways? Oh, of course, most definitely. It's an obstacle of life. You know, it's impossible for it to not engulf our life. It's, it's It happens every day, whether it's a small thing or a big thing. It's a part of life. It's a lesson learned, you know, and when we learn it, something else comes but then every fear that comes it's like hey i see fear as a friend now i don't see it as an enemy and how can you how can you share with others of how they can start to view fear as a friend instead of an enemy well it does take time um because we of course see it as something big and then we get anxious it's like oh no 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 let's not go into the boxing ring what fear You know, let's instead place it in front of us and then again, like, have that conversation and be like, for example, I am going to have this job and interview and I do not want you to get in the way. May you please be by my, be by my side. That way I can recognize you, you know, as a friend, fear as a friend. And that way, like, I'm not seeing you um, from this whole other perspective as we see fear Okay, and, no. and on that, when you're viewing fear as a friend, what are some of the ways that you're, you're viewing it? Do you, do you see the good that comes out of fear? Do you see the benefit of it? You know, it's kind of like a, I've heard people talk about, you know, looking at different emotions and mm. how, you know, for instance, um, you know, pain can actually per- be mm. perceived as a good thing because it's a warning sign that, you know, there's something to be addressed. Mm. You know, anger is, you know, there's some betrayal of some self-ego. So people look at it like that way. And when you can start to look at those emotions that some people want to banish and say that they're wrong from having mm. and see how they actually have serve you in some life, then people no longer are controlled by those emotions. Right. And I think that that's the same level of uh, idea that mm-hmm. you're expressing about fear yes. here is, you know, is kind of like, looking at it as a friend and you know suddenly it doesn't have the power that it had most definitely but what are some of the ways that you look at it as a friend because a friend is somebody that you see in a positive light right Right. so in due time you can see fear in in, yeah in a positive light in due time and so how can you look at like a particular fear and find that positive light in it what are some ways that you look at it what are some benefits that fear does bring Right. Well, the benefits is first you acknowledge it, of mm-hmm. course, like how you can acknowledge a friend, you know, and and then you kind of get acquainted, you know, like I know you're here f- for a reason and I know we have to go about this conversation and I know you will scare me every now and again if I don't handle you, you know, um, but all in all, um, it's just here to teach us that it's all okay. You know, we're like a friend. All in all, they're here to teach us, and they'll always be here. Okay, so there's some lessons to be learned from fear. Yes. You know, to teach us, to help us grow. Most to, definitely. To move beyond, to make us stronger. Mm-hmm. Right? That's the biggest thing. And so if To empower us, most definitely. To empower us and to to make sure that we are committed, Mm -hmm. you know, in in a way it builds our commitment. Like how much do we really want something? Mm. You know, what, you know, in that. It's like another analogy that I can look at is, you know, a lot of people say that when they run like a marathon, 
Uh, and marathons, people run at all different health levels and fitness levels, ages, you know, different times within mm-hmm. their life, different periods and difficulties or, or um, space that they might have. And, you know, one of the things that a lot of people that run a marathon for their very first time is that it's not about the running. It's not about the preparation. It's about that moment that they cross the finish line. They realize that if they could go through and run 26.2 miles and they could hold on to that commitment, that how can they transfer that into anything in their life? Mm. That suddenly they're empowered. Suddenly that they feel as if they can do more. And I think that that's what happens when people face their fear. You know, when that little monkey mind starts coming into the picture and it it presents itself and says, you shouldn't go here, you shouldn't do that, or, you know, so you mentioned the job interview, um, you know, you're never going to get that job, or what if you get really nervous and you say the wrong thing, or you stumble upon things, what if you don't look right, what if you spill coffee on yourself, whatever is going on within your head. But if you show up and say, you know what, I'm going to do this anyways, Mm -hmm. and I'm going to face my fears, I'm going to show up, I'm going to present myself to the best that I can I'm gonna do it despite all the monkey mind you're telling yourself that you can do something you're telling yourself that it's possible and you're telling yourself that you're not gonna let anything get in your way of your wants desires and dreams Mm -hmm. and I think that that's one of the things and the more that people face their fears the more that fear starts to become friends most definitely and then people can see this magic in life yeah and I think when there's no obstacles, you know, one of the things that you also mentioned a little bit with the hummingbird and the uh, and the ladybug is that you can be aware of maybe some hidden meanings that exist within life. Most definitely. So, you know, talk to me a little bit about the hidden meanings. And I think, you, you know, you call them, what, what kind of synchronicities do you call sweet them? Sweet synchronicities. Okay, sweet si- synchronicities. So talk to me a little bit about what... What is a sweet, sweet, this is like a tongue twister here. (laughs) It's like, how many seashells by the seashore? Okay. (laughs) It's good. It's good. It's good. Um, So sweet synchronicity. Tell tell me a little bit about it. Yes. So a good example would be you are going to a coffee shop with a really good friend, you know, and then all of a sudden the barista... Um, behind the bar is making your favorite cup of coffee and then all of a sudden your favorite song comes up it's like boy and then all of a sudden like you know another friend who you haven't seen just walks into the coffee shop and then they're like hey and then they're like and then they're like oh my god I haven't seen you in a in a long time I've been thinking about you I have you know I, I want you to help me with this and then it, all of a sudden you're helping your friend with this, and then it leads you to other things, you know. And that's what I call sweet synchronicities because it's always leading you to just your goals and all, just like this, just the sweet nectar of life, pretty much. Okay, the sweet is, nectar of life is is what I love, you know. And all these sweet synchronous um synchronicities lead you to to all these you know, like events that just help you thrive in life and help you grow and just most importantly help you know yourself more, which is the biggest thing. Okay. You know, because sometimes we don't really know ourselves fully, even though we think we do when we actually don't until all these things come into our life that kind of allows us to align with the divine. Yeah. You know. And, and Another thing is that we're constantly learning and growing, right? So how can one fully know their self if tomorrow they're going to be different than today, Mm. right? Um, Analogy that I sometimes like to give with clients and people is you don't know what you don't know, Mm -hmm. right? And we don't know everything. (laughs) Yeah. And I'll I'll use this example because, you know, montage is half Thai. So, you know, don't, don't, don't mind my example of the Thai food cuisine example here. But, you know, an analogy would be something along the lines of this, you know, um, let's say that somebody has never eaten Thai food and they go out to lunch and they go to a little Thai place that they've seen across the street and they don't know what to order. So they order the Pad Thai. Okay, they get it. 
They fall in love after the first bite. They end up saying that they can't believe that they've never experienced Thai food, and they continue to go to that same restaurant mm. maybe once a week, twice a week, even sometimes for lunch. And then what happens is they enroll a friend. Mm. And they say, you have to come and join me for lunch. This is my new favorite spot. Yeah. You're going to love the food. And they go out to eat at that place. And the friend has a dish. And they order. The food comes. And suddenly, that new friend that got, that got bring, brought to the Thai place takes a bite and looks at you and is like, looks at the, the, the other person that was enjoying it and says, do you really think this is good Thai food? Mm. And the person's like, yeah, this is all I've ever eaten. This is the only Thai place I've ever been to. Right. And they say, you know what? If you think this is good Thai food, this is mediocre at best, mm -hmm. maybe even poor, I'm going to take you to my favorite Thai restaurant. And so they go the following week and the person orders pad thai so they have a comparison mm -hmm. and they taste that pad thai and they realize that it was a hundred times better than the one they've been eating. And so they thought, they thought they knew mm -hmm. the restaurant that they loved, but it, you know, it was just this process mm -hmm. that they didn't know what better was. And sometimes how can we know ourselves if we haven't mm -hmm. even had experiences? Most like we might have a favorite activity. We might even have a favorite TV show or we have a favorite restaurant that we go to. But who's to say that if we don't open ourselves up, mm -hmm. that that might only be limited to based on what we currently know from our current experiences. And the moment that we try that new restaurant, we watch that new TV show, we go to that or we try a new activity for the first time our hearts fall, fall in love again yeah you know and maybe some of those incidences we don't like as much mm. and some of them we might realize is something about ourselves that we never knew existed something that we can now voyage a path mm -hmm. into a completely different territory Yes. You know? And I think that that, it, like, there's there's something to be said, and I think that that's what you're saying, Mumtaj, is about allowing yourself to be open. Most definitely. Allowing yourself to take away your ego as those thoughts that mm -hmm. say, I know everything, you know? And, and maybe you say that you don't know everything, but you say, I know these things about myself. I know these... I know I won't like that. I know right. I'm not going to do this. Mm -hmm. I know that this place or this event is going to be boring and I'm just going to be, I have to go to show face. And when you're yes. doing those types of things, you're not open to the fact that maybe you do hear your favorite song mm -hmm. on the radio. Maybe you interact with somebody that you haven't seen in a while. Maybe you meet a new new connection that opens up doors to possibilities for, you, for new growth, relationships, or career. Right. But if you go with your mindset with all of that ego that says, mm. I'm not going to meet anybody. Mm. I'm just going to show faith and I'm going to be there for an hour and leave and it's going to be the most boring mm. thing ever. If you go with that mindset, you're probably going to leave and validate that mindset. Most definitely. Because you're not going to have interacted mm -hmm. with anybody. You're going to be checking the clock. Mm -hmm. You're going to be bored and grumpy. Who right. the heck's going to want to go and talk to you? And then you're going to leave. Our mind is so powerful in that sense. And, and it's, this is, you know, this ability of living in this openness, mm -hmm. you have these beautiful nuggets that get presented to you. Most definitely. That if you allow yourself to say yes to life, mm -hmm. and you say, what what is the best that I can have out of this experience? What is the best I can have about this moment or this day? Right. Then you may meet the most interesting person always the person that you've if you're knowing your if you don't even know yourself mm -hmm. chances are the people that you think you know in life that you view from a certain lens from that ego yes. mind if you open yourself up maybe you learn something about them that you never even knew mm -hmm. maybe you can see them in a sense of this magic most definitely this light this love this you know right most definitely okay Tell me more about some synchronicities and sweet synchronicities that you've noticed that happen in and around your life or others' lives that mm. you can say, you know, this is this is a byproduct of them being completely open. My, okay. Well, in, in my case, it's more of the divine timing of certain people that walk into my life. You know, even if I've known them for years, I, I, it's just something about connect 
connecting with them at that right moment, it's like, wow, I know that if we connected at this time years ago, it wouldn't be the same feeling. It would not be the same feeling whatsoever. And then you just end up moving closer and then you just get to know the other person so much closer and you know they are helping you the best that they can. You know that. Because again, it's all in divine timing. Even though you've known this person for years. It's like, what? You know? Um, I like that. And even though that's a little bit slightly different than the question, you yeah. know, like, but no, <laughs> like this this gets us on, on a... On a on a trail on that is that I think that a lot of people's minds and um, it sounds like you'd agree but a lot of people's minds are so caught up with the expectations and the I need to do this by this age right. meet this by this yes. person or, or complete this or have to have this in order in order to allow for this or whatever the case may be but they're so caught up in that things need to happen at a certain specific mm-hmm. time period that within their have life. To be the case. Yeah. And, <laughs> and, and most of the time, you know, if you can just open up to it's going to be perfect at the yes. right time in the right way. Most definitely. You know, maybe somebody's single a lot longer than they would like, mm-hmm. and maybe they wanted to get married by X Y Z mm-hmm. year of their life, but they're not. Wouldn't they rather trust the divine timing that they and the next the person that they're going to be with has to be in the right order, in the right space, if they're both working on things? And if you live from that, then you don't settle. Mm. Then you don't say, well, you know what? I said I was going to get married by by 30 or whatever the case uh-huh. may be. So you know what? This is the person that I'm kind of dating, so I better make it work and like oh, end right. up in, getting in that marriage because this needs to happen at this time. And I, I mean, we all know people like that. Mm-hmm. You know, got to get this done at this time, buy this at this time, be here or there. That oftentimes, instead of listening to their heart and their openness, mm-hmm. they force things to happen. And anytime people try to force yeah. things to happen, it's very uncomfortable. And then society also has the impact on their choices, too. Yeah. You know, so, which is unfortunate, but it's okay. You know, we can't really do much about it. But we're doing something about it now, yeah. you know, allowing people <laughs> to say, you know, how can how can they step out of those those norms and know that it's okay? Mm-hmm. You know, I think part of this is living from that open space in life, right. and and you know tying back to you know the topic of being in a line with the divine. You know, being in that space of alignment, you're open. You're not carrying right. anything. There's no roadblocks and obstacles. Mm-hmm. There's no extra baggage so that you can freely move about life, meet and mingle and interact and allow yourself to be guided instead of with a set plan. It's almost like if you're open to going from one part of town to the next part of town, but you don't have a time limit and mm. you're just like, I'm just going to figure it out, you know? Uh Sometimes it's it's okay when people have plans and they have right. different things, but there's also nothing wrong with the non-plan mm-hmm. because you might have experiences that you know blow your mind out of water. Like That's you definitely. can go from, you can drive from Los Angeles to San Francisco. You can take the five straight up for those mm-hmm. that you know in other parts of the, the nation. Um, you know it's about a five and a half hour drive, and it is boring. There's nothing to see. It's you drive through straight farmland Mm -hmm. and cow concentration camps, and (laughs) and and this is where you go. And then you can also take the option of taking the one all the way up. Mm -hmm. And the one is more of like a two day journey. You kind of maybe stop and stay in a hotel in a sleepy nook, but uh, you get to go by the beautiful coast. And you know, I've driven both. You know, I've, I've had to get to San Francisco and I've driven that path of just, I need to get there and experience that. But there's also something magical about just allowing, where are you going to go? Yes. And almost sometimes it's better the other way. Most definitely. Right? Yeah. So fill, fill us in on a few other things that, you know, you might really want to mention or talk about in the, in the, the dynamics of the subject. I mean, I know we kind of went all over the place, but... <laughs> yes. Um, all in all, I know we're mostly cocoons, you know, transitioning into a butterfly 
you know, that's that's all each and every being is. You mm-hmm. know, um, sometimes it's a faster growth, other times it's a slower growth. A, a slow, patient, beautiful growth, you know. Um, but that's... Because I know for a fact I am transitioning very slowly, but I know I'm seeing all of these beautiful bubbles of synchronicity and the people and just everything coming my way slowly but I'm enjoying it you know I prefer things to come slowly than fast if that makes sense sometimes it's like oh my god everything's rushing now what yeah you know and there's nothing wrong with things coming fast too but I think what you're saying is that it's happening when it's meant to happen most definitely and those are all facets in life and so no matter what anybody's listening and what Mm -hmm. elements or aspects you're working on projects relationships health different things it's it's one step at a time and 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 how can you make the most of each and every day so that you can allow for the magic to happen right and that's something that you can even ask yourself too first thing in the morning is how can i go about my day and go to bed happy Mm. You know, just ask yourself every day. Yeah. As simple as that. Because the happiness can be created as a state right now. Mm-hmm. It's not something that's conditional upon achieving, cre- a creating, doing, meeting, X, Y, or Z, person right. or, th- or thing. Right? And, you know, a lot of people do that thing where they put that carrot in front of them, dangling on a string, and mm. they say, duh, 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 duh. I'm going right. to be happy when, uh-huh. you know... Once I buy that new house, yes. once I get married, once we have a family, once we do this, once I get this degree, right. once I, you know, and it's like, okay, that's great. I think people should go after mm-hmm. their goals, but look around in the same time. Most definitely. Be, be aware. Be aware. You can still be focused on goals, but you can be present within your life and allowing right. yourself to say, Sometimes it might take an extra six months. Most Sometimes definitely. it might happen in a in six months sooner than mm-hmm. you thought. You know, like that's that's the beauty of it. This isn't at all about saying things are gonna take amaz or this slow, long, drawn out period of time. Yes, some things might take a long time, but there's other times when people might think that and I've seen this with people where they think something's going to be happen in two years from now, mm-hmm. and then life presents it to them at that moment. They yes. say, oh, I didn't want this yet. Uh-huh. I wasn't ready for this. Allow yourself to just trust that you're ready for things when they happen. Yes. Sooner than you might think or later than yes. you think. Just release and trust and go on your way. Yeah. As easy as that. Okay, Mom Taj. It was a pleasure having you on. If there's any last... Uh, words or thoughts that you can leave the audience with Mm -hmm. um you know about aligning with the divine right let us know i would say as simple as it gets just be yourself that's just be yourself and just be Mm -hmm. and just go i love it so be yourself and just be I, I love that. And if you want any more information about Mumtaj or any of her creative writing, poetry, you can look up at liberateemporium.com and you can click on her bio, which will have a, a link to her website and additional contact information and everything along those lines. So once again, you can look at liberateemporium.com. You can find Mumtaj's shining light of a face and click on there, read a little bit more about her and get some additional information. Uh, thank you for joining us today and uh, hope to hear from you and listen in next week.